Hi, I'm Bob Rankin. I wanted to talk with you about blending and how important it is and how to use the right tools to create that almost airbrushed look. How do we use it? Why do we use it? If you take a look at this painting that I did when I was uh, in Fiji, I had been on this wonderful scuba diving trip and the color of the water was very similar to this. It was almost unbelievable, as is the color of the coral. In fact, to make the coral look believable, I had to tone it down substantially. But as I was diving, I was doing a 100-foot dive, and I really saw this incredible color transition going from fairly light towards the surface and then becoming progressively darker and darker and darker. Well, how do you create that tr transition there? How do you make it believable so that we can create a sense of depth? I'll show you. It's very easy if you have the right tools. In this case, I'm going to be using my brush, which is the Bob's Big Bad Brush. It's great for blending. It covers a large surface of paint, and of course, with the blending, you need to be working with wet to wet. So with acrylic, since they have a tendency to dry rather rapidly, you can cover a much larger space, and it really works beautifully for you. So I am uh, most emphatic when I'm using this paint to make sure that it's the right consistency of paint to water. And each one of the colors that I'm going to be blending in together needs to have the same viscosity or thickness of paint. So when I'm starting this, I've already mixed this. This is a combination of phthalo blue, um, Australian blue, and white. And it goes on very, very opaquely. Now, because this is a wraparound canvas, I'm going to also include all the sides here, but you can see how wonderfully opaque this goes on. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm working rapidly. I'm making sure that the brush is super saturated with paint, and if I'm doing that, it'll come out the same color all over. And of course, I'm going to be painting the sides as well because I like the sculptural aspect of this great canvas. It's two and a half inches deep and I want to celebrate that and really promote it so it almost looks like a painting that is also a sculpture at the same time. Now as I'm doing this, I'm doing the first layer. Then I'm going to tone it down. How do you tone it down? You either bring in some of the darker value. In this case, I'm going to be using a little bit of Hooker's Green Deep with that. I'm going to mix that in with the Thalo Blue, and I'm looking for a nice, smooth color transition here. So here I am making sure that it has the right amount of paint to water. I'm checking it, just visually getting a readout to make sure that it's a little bit darker here, and then I'm going to paint this just going back and forth. Now, that's a traditional way of doing. What I'm going to do for the color blend is bring in a figure eight movement to it. So what that does is it brings in some of that previous layer of paint and it integrates it with that top layer and you get an absolutely wonderful smooth transition there. And it almost looks like airbrush. In addition to that, I'm changing the amount of pressure that I put on the brush. At times, when I initially put the paint on, I'm going to apply a lot of pressure to it. And then when I want the color transition and the blend to take place, I'm barely touching the surface of that paint. And that helps with that wonderful smooth transition. Let's try something even more dramatic here. I'm going to go much darker now bringing in a little bit of the Hooker's Green Deep and Thalo Blue, a little of the Turquoise Blue. Water to make sure it's the same consistency. And with that, look at the change in value here. Now, if I did this just like it is, then obviously it's not going to look natural. But because of the way that I'm blending, where I'm going back in with a figure eight movement, I'm going to over exaggerate it here. And then you can see that I'm barely touching it. I'm really lightening up on the amount of pressure and then going back in. And then you get this really wonderful, smooth, smooth transition. Again, making sure that I'm working fast because I'm working wet to wet. I'm going to go back in and really put a lot of pressure down on the paint now so that I get in and around that great coral that I've crea created out of the modeling paste. 
Again, figure eight movement. Barely touching the surface of the paint. That really lightens up. And you end up with a really wonderful, nice, smooth transition from light to dark. I'm Bob Rankin. This has been all about blending. Enjoy it. Thanks. Bye.